I got a question for you guys. Ever let, let going forward from once the decision was made to get rid of the previous Ryan and Matt, Pace, and and Nagy. What has been the worst decision the Bears has have made in that time? Since they got rid of yeah, you 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 made that decision and that that marked the new era. What has been the worst decision? I'm probably forgetting something, but I'm going to go with Claypool. It's it's 100 percent Claypool for me. Claypool, yeah. So that that's actual transaction. It's not an institutional structure thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, so if we're talking I, institutional structure. Players can't count? No, I, th- I think Claypool is a – I uh, think Claypool's a, a, a fine answer. Um, I, I, w- I was opening the door for maybe a certain hiring or anything like that. Well, I, but if you, if you feel like we, we've put the right people in place, I mean, not, not going – then that's fine. No, but I, to that point, I don't know if Matt Eberflus would be the Bears head coach right now, and I don't know if it, it, it would matter if you had – Lombardi in his prime with the talent that's been here, you know, to start this new regime as we building it up here. But they should not have interviewed Matt Eberflus before they figured out who their GM was. I don't care about the timing. Yeah. Get, let your Go find your GM. If you lose out on coaches like an Eberflus, so be it. And let him, with a completely clean slate, go out and hire his coach. Yeah. My, I agree with you on that. Yeah. I would say mine would be between two things. And even though we don't know all the facts at this point, I think the worst um, uh, situation would have to be Alan Williams, right? So hiring him because of what we don't know, but because of the negative attention, the yeah. uh, everything he brings right now to the organization that is not needed right now as they're trying to advance forward, I'd say that. And I know a lot of Bears fans would disagree with me, but I would say trading Roquan Smith – for Ryan Poles, for me, for me, I didn't love that. I understood it, and I think I get it from a financial standpoint. But for me, I want a guy like Roquan Smith on my team as you go into the future, even if it means later you have to make sacrifices elsewhere. Because I do think he was a dynamic player. Um, I, I, I really wish he was still here, but I understand why. Mm-hmm. And maybe in the end, it won't matter. But I did not like that. I don't. I didn't love the Claypool trade, but. That one was – I got what he was trying to do, and I like him being aggressive to try to do it. It may not work out in the end, but it's still there's still TBD on that too. It's not looking great, but he's right. showing flashes, so we'll see. Gary, Gary touches on what my answer is going to be, and it's just not hiring an offensive coach. It's not hiring mm. Matt, mm. Matt Aberflus. It's, it's, okay, you've got Justin Fields. Yeah. Let, let's get a guy in here who says, I love Justin Fields. I have a vision for Justin Fields. This is where we're going to go with Justin Fields. That's right. what you needed to do, and then you bring in a defensive coach, and you know obviously I thought you know some of this oh they've lost twelve in a row I think is a bit disingenuous because last year's team was built to lose so this is right. not really it it is a twelve game losing streak but it's not you know so bringing a defensive coach guys in a four three it's predicated on on the three tech and yeah. then you don't give them a three tech. Sure. So, to me, that's the biggest thing. And Nate Stevens says not drafting Jalen Carter. I mean, that, that, that fits right there. It's a great underlining. And J-Rock points out Roquan didn't fit the 4-3, which, well, which is a good point. To, to, uh, Jake, to that point on the Roquan thing, not, not the scheme fit. Yeah. But knowing what you know now that the Bears did get the number one pick, which in all likelihood they wouldn't have gotten had, right. they, had, they, trade, had they not traded Roquan, would you make the trade knowing that, like using, using hindsight? It, that's really tough because of the situation they're in right now. But at, at the time, I think I would have kept Roquan. Even at this very moment, I think I would have kept Roquan and tried to, to build around fields in a different way. But I love what's transpired. And out of, whether that's pure luck or was, that was by design by polls, I love how it, it turned out. And we have DJ Moore. We have the extra pick next year. But what I hate – is having those two picks next year that everyone's already saying, oh, like it just puts a greater microscope on fields, more pressure, and everyone's looking ahead to what what could be. What is? What do you always say? The the, you know the, you're just looking ahead. The grass is always greener. Whatever. Yeah, like it's yeah. just. Next great Bears team. I, I, I hear that, but 
I was super excited on Monday night watching the Panthers lose. Sure. I was sweating that thing out. Hope they never win again. Yeah. Jake so, Riggle had a good comment there. He, he said, uh, have to move on from Flus. Can't drag this out another two years. I think that's interesting because what Nagy got five, four or five seasons. I can't four. Remember, four. But they had a 12 and four year in there. Right. Um, Trustman, obviously, they moved on after two. Fox was, was what, two or three? Four. Fox was here four years? Four years. The thing that the thing that's frustrating is like with the NFL, it does seem like certain teams are able to pivot a lot quickly, and the Bears are just such a slow moving ship, and it seems to go in five year increments. So when you see something crumbling, and you think, "Oh, this sets it back another five years," right. and when I talk about thirty eight years without sure. a Super Bowl, that's the frustrating part because I mean right. there, there is just zero patience in this town, and I, I don't think there should be. Yeah, true. And, and I also now thinking back to what we just talked about with Roquan, and then I'll move forward. But, you know, he played a part in that as well, right? So he put Poles in a bad situation because there wasn't an agent and it was a complete mess. So maybe Poles did want to bring him back and it just didn't work out. So mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't have any ill will towards how that situation was handled. I just personally wish he was still here. Um, but – it's it's okay. That's what I'm talking about, though. You can't you can't keep looking at it and being like, well, if it would have happened like this and it could have happened like this, and Braxton Jones didn't get put on the IR, and if Allen Williams didn't have this issue, and you know, if the Bears, you know, defense would have stopped it like franchise. I just did. It, exactly. Every team has this. They just have to roll through it. And it, it, one day we won't have to keep saying this. That you know, if it could have, would have, should have. Like it will be like they did it. They came, they saw, they conquered, they were together, and they were the best team in the NFL, and they are your Super Bowl champions.